How's it going, everybody? And um, let's continue on in Acts. And we're going to be lazy in the New Living Translation, the watered-down version. It does skip verses. I forget where it skips in Acts. Um, newer translation, omitted verses, Wikipedia. List of verses. Yeah, so there, there are some in Acts. We did that a while back, and I need to make sure... Um, it was 837, 1534. Where are we at today? Wow, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow's study. Wow, tomorrow's study. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you, Lord, for making sure tomorrow that we catch that. All right. So we decided, having come to complete agreement, to send you official representatives along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are sending Judas and Silas to confirm what we have decided concerning your question. And by the way, the New Living helps us understand better. Never need it for um, Gospels or Daniel or Revelation. And uh, not much for Romans. And really don't need it much for Acts, but the epistles, you sure need it. But um, it just makes it easier to understand. But if we come across a false doctrine, we'll take it to the, uh, or something that just doesn't sound right, then we will take it to the King James. And if there's still questions, like John 3.16, we take it to the Greek, because God doesn't love everybody. For God so loved cosmos, John 3, 16. The first usage, the appropriate harmonious arrangement, order, constitution, government, definition, arrangement, harmon his harmonious arrangement. That's what he so loved. Anyway, um, because the world... I mean, Jesus said the world hated me before it hated you, and I have chosen you out of the world. So that's why Hollywood did a movie called Lost in Translation, right? They get a laugh out of it, and the false, the wolves in sheep's clothing shove John 3.16 up your nostrils, don't they? Of course they do. Anyway, so we decided having to come to complete agreement to send you official representatives along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. We are sending Judas and Silas to confirm what we have decided concerning your question. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than a few requirements. You must abstain from eating food offered to idols, consuming blood or the meat of the strangled animals, didn't we read this yesterday? Or was it just the same thing? No. no, it was also in yesterday's study. They're just repeating the same things again. There it is right there. Verse 20 and so forth. But So literally repeating the same things. And we went over that and explained it yesterday. You don't have to worry about these type of things today as they are transitioning from the old covenant to the new. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit for us. So it was just what they were saying. You don't want to eat food offered to idols if you can get it. As far as consuming blood um, for the meat of strangled animals, um, you don't have to worry about stuff like that today. Sexual immorality, of course. So you see the fusion. That still stands today. If you do this, you will do well, farewell. So he's giving suggestions. But the sexual immorality, that's still in the list of sins. Galatians 5, 19 through 21, King James Version, Bible Gateway. So as we've clicked on that many times, it gives a laundry list of sins. And of course, the AI is messing with us again, as usual, as it's been doing. 
and and it'll say adultery, fornication, wrath, strife, lavaciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, variance, emulations. Um, and at the end of the list, it says those which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. And Bible Hub, when in doubt, just go to good old Bible Hub, right? So we'll go to Galatians 5, 19. Go down here to the King James Version. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavaciousness. Now, let's go to... Does it give you the next verse? It does. I was afraid it'd throw me to the next chapter. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Envyings, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I've told you in times past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. So the Lord will call you out of... You saw it, the fornication, the uh, adultery, which, of course, there's the spiritual version, but they're talking about the sexual immorality. So let's highlight that. I think we already have it highlighted here. Um. It says, and from fornication, and there's your sexual immorality. That's telling you that's not the other kind. <laughs> from which if you keep yourselves, let's just continue on the King James, you shall do well, fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle or the good news or the message, which when they had read, they rejoiced. For the consolation and Judas and Silas being prophets also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And let's continue on in Daniel 7 where we do get to or we're already in describing the Antichrist as the horn, the little horn of Daniel 7. And Jesus said he would be here in his own name. And a trump is a horn, and a horn is a trump. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, from God. Thousands of thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were open. So that goes all the way to Revelation 20, uh, around verses you know, 11 through 15. Hell is not eternal torment. Hell is the grave. God chose the sheep before the foundation of the world. I beheld then because the voice of the great words which the horn spake, make America great again, the great words, make America great again, the great words, everything that comes out of his mouth is magnified and great. He never says anything normal. He's always moving the needle one way or the other. But of course, when he has seemingly returned from the dead, it will be great words of blasphemy. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. Remember the beast, the false prophet and Satan, they don't get hell. They don't get the grave. They go directly into the lake of fire because the mark of the beast is total human body possession. And that's what gets eternal torment day and night forever and ever. That's why the only time eternal torment is mentioned is Satan, the beast, and the false prophet, and those that take the mark. Because it's the fallen angels that are tormented day and night forever and ever. They have eternal life. They don't get to die. But you see, then when you get the judgment, the flame came down and devoured them at Revelation 29, all the humans. That was judgment. And then as dead, 
they're judged and their dead bodies are thrown into the lake of fire. It's just a cleansing process. The weeping and gnashing of teeth is up at judgment when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets stand in the kingdom and you yourselves thrust out. That's where it speaks of um, gnashing your teeth, weeping and gnashing your teeth. And of course, they encompass the camp of the saints. So they're surrounding the kingdom, the thousand year millennial kingdom, and the flame comes down and devours them and they're dead. All the humans are then dead and their dead bodies are judged. And it even says, and the dead were judged. Anyway, as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds. Everything in yellow is God winning. The green and the blue is the Antichrist. Coming with the clouds of heaven, like Jesus comes in the cloud, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, glory, and kingdom, that all the people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. God's winning. So why is Daniel grieved? He's grieved about these end times and the Antichrist. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. And we'll get more to the Antichrist tomorrow. It just bounces back and forth. So the overall en entire vision disturbed him because the end times is so disturbing. Jesus said, it'll be a time like never was and never will be because all goats will become possessed. They will have superhuman strength and they will outnumber the sheep. They will be destroying sheep. The great tribulation lasts three and a half days. It clearly states that in Revelation 11. That's the two witnesses for we are all kings and priests. There are 11, I mean, excuse me. There are five comparisons of the two witnesses to the church both represented by candlesticks, both represented by olive trees, a great earthquake at the end of their persecution. They both caught up the Jesus in the clouds, both persecuted by the Antichrist. I'm glad you're here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.